watched in awe. In the area of St. Nicholas Radio, the Italian Shielded Communication Center has been preserved until today. Its double, heavy shielded doors, its armed windows with door handles similar to a submarine muzzle, make this building an important monument. When Leros fell, the Germans took over all the Italian facilities. The German Eagle still remains in one of these rooms. The three antennas stand arrogantly as if this battle had never happened, as if someone just forgot them there. On the 26th of September 1943, the destroyer ship Queen Olga, along with English Intrepid, were surprise attacked while they were anchored inside the port of Laki. The tragedy that took place that day was beyond imagination. The Queen Olga was literally blown into the air while the oil that she was carrying burned around her on the sea. 80 people died on the spot, a legendary boat for the Greek naval army. Just a step further, close to the pier, the English Intrepid is also sinking, and the catastrophe continues. Small boats, barges, floating cranes, hydroplanes, anything that floats is fiercely bombarded. 31 meters under the sea lies silently what is left of the destroyer ship Queen Olga. Portholes, shell cases and cannon shells are some of the signs that indicate that this was once upon a time a battleship. The power of a destructive war slowly unfolds before our eyes. Continuing our diving at La Quille, we head towards the entrance of this natural port. A dark bulge can be distinguished at the depth of 45 meters below the sea. We meet with mountains of big metallic circles that, if stretched, form an impenetrable metallic net. Pontoons, big fish and a multitude of sea life complete this serene, captivating dark blue. Coming up to a depth of 24 meters, a huge metallic buoy that has been left there since the war is still hanging like the ghost of a flying saucer. At the same place of St. Nicholas Radio, there is another private collection filled with relics from the Battle of Leros in a special space. The love of Mr. Yanis Paraponaris, his passion for findings of the Second World War, led him to create a sizable collection. Uniforms, gear, missiles from ships, bombs, mines, even aircraft canopies decorate this small area. In an environment so warm, with so many objects around you, you feel like you're touching them, like you're holding them yourself.
Following the narrow road to the village of Platanos, we arrive at still another impressive private collection, the one of Mr. Canaris. Tassos Canaris experienced the battle when he was just a boy and his life is history itself. Many times he has been the main reason for the reunion of old comrades in arms and even enemy soldiers that when they finally met they embraced each other wholeheartedly. He owns a great collection of photographs, personal photographs of the soldiers, letters and all the bibliography that has ever been written about the Battle of Leros. At the area of Merica, one of many of the Italian shelters has been turned into a lively museum. Around it, many different vehicles of the armed forces are exhibited. This was the tunnel of the Italian Navy Command and it was so much better than the British commands. Its floors were made of concrete. It had good lighting and excellent ventilation. Tunnels and dim light, guns, maps and information show us an even crueler image of this hard battle. While time passes, the shelters became sites. The shipwrecks became monuments. The barracks became museums. And the pain of the war became history. Leros, an alternative proposition for your vacation a special destination that combines natural beauty and historic memory. <laughs>